The purpose of this video is to give you a visual aid on the process on updating your Gen 2 Automax, either a 300 or 500C, to go ahead and convert it into a new Gen 3 model. The first thing you will need to do to start this process is remove your housing top. In the interest of time, we have already up, uh, removed the screws, but you will remove the four screws on the back and the three screws inside the drawer. Once you do that, you can go ahead and remove your housing top and turn it on its side. The next step is to go ahead and remove the door hatch switch, removing these three screws here. Once you go ahead and remove those three screws, you want to go ahead and lift up and slide through the metal ribbing and you can go ahead and just leave that in your drawer. Next step is to go ahead and remove your particle deflector strap screw here. After you remove the screw from the particle deflector strap, you need to go ahead and remove the screw. Uh, two screws inside here on the left dust cover and the two screws here on the right dust cover. After you remove your, your four screws, go ahead and open your drawer and carefully lift up and move around your dust cover to get the best vantage point to go ahead and remove it. After you remove your two dust covers, our next step is to go ahead and remove the two screws on either side of the PC board cover, here and here. After you remove your screws, you, now you can just simply pull off your PC board cover. After we remove our PC board cover, we will now disconnect our main ribbon cable. We will be updating our LED board on the 500C. To go ahead and get access to the LED board, we will have to remove the two screws here and here, and follow down the middle rib and remove the screws here and here. Once you remove those four screws, you will now be able to remove your rib, put that to the side. To remove the LED cover, we will need to remove the screws on each end, here and here. After you remove your two LED screws, go ahead and make sure your ribbon cable fits directly on the inside slit and pull through and disconnect your main ribbon cable. Now that we have our LED cover off, we will now remove the four screws on the corners of the LED board here, here, and here, and here. You will be able to remove your LED cover, and now you will be able to go ahead and install your new one the same way as you took it off. Now that we have our four supporting LED screws in, we will now go ahead and insert our main ribbon cable back in and connect our lighting board back as well. Once you go ahead and reconnect those, we'll go ahead and pull through, push through on your cover and go ahead and return your two screws on the corners.
Our next process is now to go ahead and remove all the cables on the main PC board, first starting on the left top hand corner, and disconnect our bin full, our two auto start sensors here and here, and our locking solenoid, and let's go ahead and disconnect our tachometer wire. Now that we have disconnected those cables, let's go ahead and uh, cut our zip ties that are holding our motor and capacitor wires along with the zip tie that's holding the tachometer wire. The next step is to go ahead and remove the left hand side capacitor screw so we can go ahead and disconnect our lid wires along with our motor wires down here. So let's go ahead and uh, disconnect our screw. Disconnect our capacitor wires up here. Now that we have our capacitor loose, we will now turn to the drawer and swivel it to the side so we can get a better access to now go ahead and remove the remaining wires on the bottom. Let's go ahead and disconnect the two power receptacle wires, the black and the white, our three motor, the red, yellow, and black, and our binfuls, the black and the green. Now that we have successfully removed our wires from the PC board, let's go ahead and uh, pull through on the slot over here. Our next step is now removing the four supporting screws on the PC board located on each of the corner of the PC board and as well as underneath the by the fuse on the bottom right hand corner. You will now be able to go ahead and remove your PC board and install your new one the same way that we did with the old one. After you successfully installed your new PC board, we are now going to go ahead and now get to the cutting block. Let's go ahead and remove the three screws that are holding the motor wires to the cabinet here, here, and here. After you disconnect your three supporting screw wires, let's go ahead and remove the ground wire here. Our next step is to go ahead and remove the power receptacle cover screws here and here. And if you're working on a 300C, there's an additional step that you need to go ahead and perform and remove these screws on the right hand corner of the dust cover here, here here and here. Now that we removed our two screws on the receptacle cover, we're going to go ahead and disconnect and remove and pull through here. Let's go ahead now and disconnect our two receptacle cables on the right hand corner, the white and the black one. Only remove these two. Our next step is now to go ahead and remove the four supporting cutting block screws. One all the way down here, one here, one here, and the one all the way down inside here.
we recommend to get this last one out, get a flashlight and leave it on the side so you can get a good viewpoint of where your cutting block screw is. After you go ahead and remove your four screws on the cutting block, we are now going to go ahead and remove the pulley belt. I just looped a thin cable through the belt. Now I'm just going to pull up and use my hand to go ahead and slide that belt off. Once you go ahead and hear that it's disconnected, you want to go ahead and give it some tension, fold it over the cutting block, and let's go ahead and just tape it so the tape will go ahead and now support the wires to the, to the cabinet. After we remove our pulley belt, we will now remove the cutting block from the cabinet using both handles here and here and lifting straight up and over to your table. Now that we have our cutting block out, we want to go ahead and update the paddle assembly. First thing we're going to need our two millimeter Allen key wrench. Let's go ahead and remove this screw on the pulley wheel. Once you remove your screw, go ahead and pull that wheel off. Now let's work on the other side and get the gear cover off. We're going to use the same two millimeter Allen key and let's go ahead and get inside here and remove our screw on the top. After you remove your Allen key screw, get your screwdriver and let's go ahead and remove the two screws here holding the gear cover on. Let's go ahead now and remove the gear dust cover. Now that we got inside the gear cover, let's go ahead and now get our feet arm pinion gear out with this flathead screwdriver and just pry that off. Now let's go ahead and remove the earring. Go ahead and now remove this gear. And now we will be able to remove all the gears and this. Now that we have the right feet arm pedal off, let's go ahead and now work on getting the left side out. By this, you're going to need your two five millimeter Allen keys. You're going to go ahead and stick your short end on the left hand side. And your normal 5mm one here on the cutting block bar. As described in the document, there is Loctite, so you need to go ahead and loosen and retighten your right side and then loosen and retighten to break that lock Loctite. Once you break your Loctite, you get your vice grips. And only on the cutting black bar here, you're going through and under. So we're not spinning this bar. Now that we have our vice grip holding on the cutting black bar, we're going to go ahead and now and remove the right hand screw of the cutting black bar. Now that we removed our right side cutting block bar screw, we are now going ahead and insert our small end of the 5mm Allen key wrench. With our vice grips in place, let's go ahead and push up on our screw. We're just going to go ahead and loosen it, not completely remove it off the bar. Once you get enough of a vantage point, you can go ahead and move this bar and you only need so much gap so we can go ahead and now slide this off. Once you have your strap off you will now be able to go ahead and pull your whole old paddle assembly on and we'll now install the new one. 
Before we go ahead and now install our new feed paddle assembly onto the old cutting block, we will need to go ahead and remove the two screws here to install our new tachometer wire on the left hand side of the feed arm assembly. After you have now installed your new tachometer wire to the left hand side, we're going to go ahead and get a zip tie, put it through the loop right here, wrap it around, and make sure you're pulling up firmly on your tachometer so you're not leaving any slack at the bottom. Go ahead and leave that nice and tight. And cut the end. first step in installing your new feed arm paddle assembly is getting the strap through the bar, sliding that through. Let's go ahead now and connect your right hand side on the cutting shaft bar. Now that you have your strap and your right hand side on, now we're going to go ahead and pull with a little bit of strain and go ahead and get that onto the left hand side. Once you have it on the left hand side using your rubber mallet, you want to go ahead and gently hit until it falls in place. Tighten our right side cutting black bar screw. Make sure you align your cutting black bar with the opening. Using your vice grips to go ahead and make sure you're not spinning that bar, go ahead and tighten um, the right hand side screw all the way. And we're going to go ahead and do the same thing on the left hand side. And go ahead and tighten the screw as well and holding our vice grips to go ahead and make sure we're not spinning that bar. your bar, your strap, your deflector strap is nice and snug. You have successfully completed that. Let's now go ahead and then install our pulley wheel back on. We are now going to go and install the pulley wheel back on to the left hand side of the cutting block. Put your wheel on first. Insert your screw. And using that same two millimeter allen key, let's go Now that we are finished on the left hand side of the cutting block, we're now going to work on removing the gear cover by taking off the two screws. With your new feed arm paddle assembly, you should have gotten the, your new feed arm pinion gear. You're going to go ahead and uh, realign it. Once you go ahead and you put your pin and gear in, let's go ahead and insert your 2mm Allen key screw. Once you have that on, let's go ahead and uh, put some grease on those gears. If you get some grease on your gears, let's go ahead and now put the top gear cover back on. And return those two screws on the top. We have now accomplished and updated our feed arm pedal assembly from a Gen 2 to a Gen 3 on an Automax. 
Now that we have successfully installed the new feed arm paddle assembly, now it is time to go ahead and reinstall the cutting block back to the cabinet. Let's go ahead and uh, lift on those two handles and carefully drop down your cutting block. Make sure you're getting those screws. If done correctly, you'll go ahead and uh, hear those clicks. Now that we have our cutting block black in place and it's secured, we're going to go ahead and now reattach our pulley belt back to the pulley wheel. So remove your tape and using those same cables, wrap around and pull up. Pull your cable through. Your pulley belt's now back on your sure your pulley wheel. Now that we have our pulley belt back onto the pulley wheel, follow the reverse steps on the document to go ahead and get all your electrical back to where it needs to be and get your machine back up and running again.